Hello and welcome to this third Wisdom Cricket Daily podcast on the fourth India-England test at Ranchi. Today was not a good day for England. I'm Yaz Rana and with me today is the Wisdom India Head of Content, Abhishek Mukherjee. England started the day hoping to establish a lead around the 100-run mark, but Kuldeep Yadav and Drew Jurel's resistance continued long into the morning session. Kuldeep eventually fell for 28 off 131 deliveries as Jurel went through the gears, eventually falling for 90, taking India up to 307 within 46 runs of England's first innings total. Ashwin then put in his performance of the series, taking five wickets, including Duckett and Pope, in consecutive deliveries with the new ball. Cordy batted well for 60, but with a score on 110 for three, he was bowled, playing back to cool deep. It sparked the dramatic England collapse, the visitors losing their final seven wickets for just 35 runs. Cool deep was irresistible, finishing with four for 22, off 15 overs. India were left needing 192 to win the test and in the eight overs remaining in the evening session, Rohit and Jaiswal made a significant dent into that target, finishing the day on 40 without loss, feasting on several gimmies from the England spinners. Abhishek, let's start with that partnership between Jarrell and Kuldeep because it really changed the game. When they came together, India were seven down, um, 170 or, or, or so runs behind England. And now at the end of the day, India on track to seal the series tomorrow. They were both in very different ways, brilliant and very effective. Yeah, Jurel, uh, I, I think, surpassed all expectations because, see, coming into Test cricket, Jurel had uh, made only 100 in first-class cricket. And that was against Nagaland, who are one of the weaker side, usually, often in the plate, plate group of... Uh, uh, the Ranji Trophy. So uh, that was a massive hundred. But apart from that, he did not have a Ranji Trophy hundred in a, in any first in any first class cricket. He didn't have a hundred. So this was his second highest first class score. His glove work against spin will will improve over time. But but with the bat, he has genuinely come up good. He and he did not shy away from playing strokes. He his footwork against spin was excellent. If you look at the sixes. Some of them, he just were very decisive footwork. He came down the pitch and then hit them either straight or with the turn. It, it, it's a pretty cool selection from India because, you know, the talent pool is, is huge. There are a lot of people with, with really excellent records. Um, wh where do you see his, his future as, a, as an international player? Because he's still only only 22. He's in the same under-19 cohort as, as just Jaiswal. Um, obviously, Pan, Pan's return looms large, I guess, for India. Um, do you think he's a player who, who who might be able to forge a successful career as a specialist batter? Yeah, definitely. And uh, while Pant is making a comeback, uh, it, it, almost certainly making a comeback in the IPL, it is not sure when he will be able to keep wicket full-fledged at test level. Mm. So ju until he does, Jurel is definitely the front runner. It may be that Pant may play test cricket as a, purely as a batter for some time. Mm. Because uh, it's not just 20 overs of wicket keeping. This is completely different. Um, Ashwin had his best day with the ball um, across the series so far. But I, I thought, even though it was Ashwin who got the five, I thought Kuldeep um, was was the most. That that's the performance I'm going to remember uh, for longer. Yes. He was he was absolutely sensational. You know, it, it, it's five years or so, even even maybe maybe even longer, uh, seven years since since Kuldeep first made um, his his Test debut. He's not played a lot. But he's had quite a lot of success when he has played. This is probably the longest run he's had in the side. Um, obviously, with Ashwin at 37, Jadeja at 35, he looks like the um, Indian number one spinner in waiting. Yes, definitely. And uh, I like the fact that Michael Vaughan uh, compared, called him the left-handed Shane Vaughan today. And Vaughan had a huge impact on Kuldeep. I think uh, when Kuldeep got that five-wicket haul in Sydney... He dedicated it to Warren. I remember that. And uh, so it was a nice thing. But yes, as you mentioned, Kuldeep is very likely to uh, emerge as India's leading uh, spinner over the years. Another thing, uh, India play five more home tests this year. Uh, three against New Zealand, two against Bangladesh. So uh, over that period, uh, Akshar Patel may still uh, try to make a comeback. But Kuldeep can now say after uh, he was what uh, he batted as night watch uh, in both innings in Rajkot. 
He batted on all four days of that test match. And here too, he has batted on, I think, two of the three days. And his batting has improved significantly. Mm. So he is still not a, a, a Jadeja or an Ashwin or an Aksar with the bat. But he is a He's much no better batter. Either. Yeah. <laughs> but he... we, we, were, we were talking about this the other day. Um, just how few wrist spinners there are in Test yes. If you're looking back in the last 10 years, um, you know, a few have played. Obviously, Rahan Armour has played this series. Um, England have had the odd one get get a game or two, but not much more than that. Adi Rashid had a stint. Um, Bishu at West Indies. Swepson's played a little bit for Australia. The main one, really, it w- would be Yasser Shah, who, who obviously took 200 yes. in no time for Pakistan. It's obviously a very hard thing to do. Uh, to be a wrist spinner in in Test cricket, um, and Kuldeep's had a fair bit of success this series on um, on four quite different pitches. Actually, I guess Test two and three were quite similar, but at least, you know three different types of surfaces. Why do you think he's successful in a way that very few wrist spinners are able to? Because I know that before the series, a lot of the chat in England, at least, was you know if you look historically, wrist spinners have, have struggled in in India. You know, Warren didn't have a lot of success in India. Slow wrist spinners have genuinely struggled. Uh, even the Indian wrist spinners who have done well, Chandrasekhar, Kumle, they were uh, not conventional wrist spinners. They were they were quicker than usual. And uh, uh, surprisingly, Afridi did well. Again, a quick bowler, Shahid, Shahid Afridi, when he bow in test matches, uh, uh, from whatever I remember. One reason can be that uh, f- uh, it's not that wrist spinners do poorly, but Indians uh, mm, grow up playing a lot of wrist spin. Wrist spinners have an advantage bowling with the kookaburra because uh, uh, it's not easy to bowl finger spin with an old kookaburra because the seam gets embedded a lot quicker. But SG, the seam stays pronoun- more pronounced for longer which is uh, probably why, it's a theory, but uh, which is probably why uh, mm, wrist spinners don't have the advantage that they have with the Kukabura. No, that, that, that's really interesting. Um, you pinpointed earlier today what, what the turning point in the day was and it involved Cool Deep. Um, talk us through it, because at that point, it, it wasn't that long ago, England were 110 for three, decent lead, pitch doing a fair bit. It looked like they were still maybe not in control of the test match, but the test match felt in the balance. And then Crawley gets Zach Crawley. Talk us through it. Yeah. So Crawley, before that, Crawley and Duckett, I mean, they became the first pair of openers, both of whom scored 300 in India, but touring openers to score 300 in 40 years, almost 40 years. So Crawley and Crawley was looking dangerous today. So uh, 20 of his 60 runs had come through cover. Three of his seven boundaries had been through there. But Kuldeep and Rohit, before that test match, if you hear the stump microphone, they discussed and took that cover fielder away. They made uh, Crawley play that shot against the turn. Through that empty cover area, he missed and was bowled. And England lost their uh, lost seven wickets for 35 runs. Mm. So that was the moment, I feel, because Crawley was taking the game away. And it is not the first time that England collapsed. I mean, even Ahmedabad uh, 2021, that uh, infamously low-scoring match, England Crawley made 54 out of 112. England were 80 for three at one point, and Crawley fell, and England collapsed. Yeah, it's a really interesting series from Crawley because he's he's probably been England's most consistent batter, but he's yet to get a really significant score. Um, but there's a lot of chat around around the pitch, not because. Um, people are saying it's turning too much or anything like that, but more just trying to work out what what the pitch is doing because it feels for long periods it feels totally benign with the odd ball staying low but staying low at a pace that isn't particularly threatening. But then you have passages of play where batting looks extremely difficult. Today England lost thirty five for seven. There was a similar but less dramatic. Um, Collapse, I guess, for, for India yesterday, where they where they went very slowly for quite a long period of time. What do you make of the pitch? Because at, at, t- at times it looks like scoring runs is, is totally impossible, but uh, but others survival as uh, I guess Ollie Robinson showed on on the end of day one, the start of day two, and called it Yadav twenty four hours later. That survival, even for lower order players, is is eminently possible. Yeah. So what what is happen? What has happened consistently is 
the odd ball has kept low. Typically, in uh, when you uh, talk about difficult Indian pitches, the odd ball takes off. Mm. But here, the, the the uneven there has been uneven bounce, but it has been normal or low bounce, which is why uh, several wickets have uh, happened because the ball has kept low and uh, some uh, England wickets like Stokes uh, and a few others, they played from the crease a lot. And that is uh, uh, both Robinson and Kuldeep, what they did was they uh, played to a plan that they would try play as much as possible on the front foot. Mm. So even if the ball kept low, they were safe. And sometimes they would just try to put the bat, uh, I, I mean, try to play outside the line and try to rule out the LBW and everything. There was turn, but not great turn. And to negate the bounce, they played forward. Mm. Some England wickets in the second innings, Stokes immediately comes to mind. They they happened because they played rooted to the crease. And a, a perfect example of how to bat on this pitch, I mean, Joe Root demonstrated on day one. So he was playing everything on the front foot and was going back only when he was sure that the ball was not uh, keeping straight. Mm. I thought he was brilliant on the first day. Mm. No, no, absolutely. Um, so, so do you think that, obviously there is inconsistent bounce, but do you think that the bounce isn't actually that dangerous and that certain defensive techniques make it look much hazardous than it actually is? Because inconsistent bounce, if it's um, not particularly fast, doesn't necessarily have to be dangerous. Yeah, the, the Stokes innings I thought was was quite interesting in that he was only at the crease for 13 balls, but it felt like something could happen almost every delivery. He was... He was out LBW twice in that 13 ball period. There's there's one marginal um umpire's call that um ironically went in his favour after what he said at the end of <laughs> the previous test match. And there's also one that was was pretty dead, but um India and the umpire thought it was uh bat first rather than pad first, but replays confirmed it was pad first. Um it, it, but you're right to point out he he was he was sort of hanging on the crease, and even when he was playing forward, it was um not, it wasn't a significant stride forward. So if there was any inconsistent bounce, he was very vulnerable to the ball keeping low. And we saw at the end of the day as well, England had a, sh um, a big LBW shout um, to, to Rohit Sharma. And it was similar. Rohit was playing back. It feels like batters can get in trouble yeah. on this pitch much more if they're playing back rather than forward. And in the fourth innings, whenever, uh, uh, whenever Hartley tossed anything up, Rohit... Uh, decisively came on the front foot, sometimes took the ball on the full and just played it. Mm. So he seems determined. And the only time England had a serious LBW appeal against him was when Rohit tried to play root, I think, from the crease. Mm. So, yeah, I don't think he'll be playing much from the crease to the spinners uh, anymore tomorrow. Mm. Well, that's it for part one. In, in part two, we'll talk a little bit more about England. Abhishek, there was a weird passage of play in the third session when Folks was batting with Bashir and India were very, very happy to keep the field back. Uh, but Folks wouldn't take the single until almost every time the fourth ball of the over uh, and he'd take the single and then Bashir will block out two. Um, and England was scoring about one run and over for, for really quite a long time. Um, and... It was interesting because because the game wasn't really going anywhere, but you guess you could say as well that you know, every run's important in a, in a game that's potentially going to be quite low scoring. Um, Ashwin eventually gets in with a carrying ball. Um, what, what did you make of that passage of play? Yeah, if England win by 10 runs, I think... Oops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it, he'd be vindicated. But uh, the thing is, yeah, I mean, 10 runs are still more than no runs. Mm. And let's uh, see, there were... Uh, Essentially, a couple of options. Go after the bowling or just keep doing whatever he was doing. He actually looked very good. So, I was wondering. Uh, I think someone even asked, so why not push folks up the order? If mm. this is something he can do. Mm. If he can survive and keep getting the singles, why not push him up the order? As as an as a, as a observer from, from outside England, do you, do you think that, that, that should be the way England go? Um, you know, folks is he, he bats in the top five in, in, in county cricket. He, he's very much a classical batter in that way. He's not a great batter with the tail. 
Um, and, and the way Bairstow is playing at the moment, um, it, it feels like, you know, he, he's on the verge of a significant score in, in this test match. Um, but he sort of counter punches whatever the scenario, whatever the pitch is doing, etc. And you think he'd be someone who would be better with the tail. Would you be tempted to, to, to swap them in the order, get folks up to five or six? Yeah, I mean, uh, see, if someone can play the shots while batting and farm the strike, uh, they should probably be closer to the tail. So, uh, but uh, folks clearly can play spin. He played spin today better than most, but he was relying on singles. So he can still do that while batting with the main batters mm. instead of doing that. Because instead of doing that with the tail gets the team, what, 10, 12 runs. Mm. But doing that with top order batters, uh, there's a higher probability of getting more runs. The the last eight overs of the day were, were pivotal in that India made a significant dent on that England target. Um, Tom Hartley bowled um, several loose deliveries. Rohit was was yes. um, ruthless towards him. Do you see that if there being any way back for England in this in this game? A lot of the chat before the series and before this game actually was that on pitches that are a bit more inconsistent, it brings um, England's less experienced spinners into it. But you, you still need to be accurate. Whatever the pitch is doing, you yes. can't hold that many bad balls. Yeah, I, I think uh, Hartley was too full. Mm. Uh, so... Basically, uh, I mean, uh, they, they were easy pickings for Rohit. If you if the batter is allowed to take you on the full in the fourth innings, probably not the not a great length to bowl to. But uh, then again, this is his first series. Hmm. Is, is there any chance for England? Of course, this pitch can uh, change change its course at any point. It feels like it won't take very long tomorrow morning for India to get themselves into position where it feels like the game is is pretty much done. But at the same time, we have seen some dramatic collapses already in the yes. test match, so not not completely. Also, uh, see, this is uh, in India versus England, but essentially it is going to be a contest between a group of batters and a group of spinners, most of whom were not playing test cricket a year ago. So, <laughs> yeah, so essentially what they make of this scenario, let's see. That's a very good point. Well, cheers for your time, Abhishek. Uh, we'll be back with uh, a weekly podcast once everything is over in Ranchi tomorrow.